Hello everybody, welcome to Keysight University, Introduction to Simulating with Memory Designer. My name is Tim, I'm a signal integrity expert and I will guide you through this tutorial. Here is the course overview. To start the course, we will perform a 3D EM simulation with SI Pro. We will then use the result from SI Pro in Memory Designer. Finally, we will use Memory Designer to perform an eye measurement. To get started, make sure you have downloaded the latest ADS and have the proper license to run it. You also need to download the zipped folder from the course content. If you extract the zipped folder, you'll find two files. One is an instructional PDF and another is an ADS archived workspace. The PDF file documents all the steps covered in this tutorial. Feel free to follow the PDF if that is your preferred learning style. Let's get started! Lab 0 an archive and ADS workspace. In the extracted folder, there is a ADS archived workspace. We will use ADS to unarchive it. Let's start by running the ADS program. Once you double click, the splash screen should pop up. You should see the get started window. Click on unarchive. and browse to the ADS archived workspace. Open the archived file. Browse to a desired location to store the workspace. Click on Next to unarchive. Once the unarchiving is done, you should see the following screen. That's it. That is lab zero. Congrats. Lab 1, 3D EM simulation with SI Pro. In this lab, we will perform a 3D EM simulation with SI Pro. First, we will click on Lab 1 and open the layout for a DIM card. In the layout window, look for the SI PI Pro icon. Click on the icon to start SI Pro. SI Pro takes the 2D layout and the stack up information to create a 3D view of the board. Let's enable the DDR setup function by clicking on tools and click on options. Make sure you put a check in this checkbox. Click OK to confirm and close the window. We will use the DDR setup from tools. You should see the DDR setup window. Use the mouse scroll to zoom into the dim. Click on the connector component and assign it to memory controller. Click on U1 and assign it to memory devices. You can click and drag to rotate the 3D view. Right click and drag will shift the 3D view. Click on U19 and assign it to Memory Devices. Click on Generate DDR Setup. A new DDR setup is generated automatically. Let's close the DDR Setup window and configure the component models. In the following steps, we will set up the arrayed resistor model. We will check the arrayed component box and assign proper port numbers to the pins. Feel free to pause the video to make sure you have the correct port assignments. We are checking this box so entering a new component value does not require a new simulation. Use the drop-down list to add a lumped resistor. Change the resistance value to 30 ohm and hit enter. Click done to exit the model editor. The DDR setup has configured the frequency range based on the speed grade selected. We just need to double click on run. Simulation should start to run 
it should take about 5 to 10 minutes to finish the simulation. In the meantime, we will use a simulated solution with the same setup to continue the lab. The simulated result is under My Solution DDR Setup. We will generate a simulatable subcircuit from the solution. A dialog should pop up and ask you if you want to overwrite the existing design. Click yes to overwrite. A schematic window should show up and if you scroll up, you can see the resistor value we entered. Close the subcircuit schematic window. Congratulations! Now you know how to perform a 3D EM simulation with SI Pro using DDR setup. Lab number two, use EM results with Memory Designer. Starting from where we left off, look at your task bar to find the ADS icon. Click on the ADS main window to bring it up. Let's open lab two to use our EM results in a memory designer simulation. You should see the schematic window pop up. Then you can scroll up to zoom into the schematic. Let's find the memory designer PCB from the palette on the left. Use the drop down list to show all the palettes available to you. Find the memory designer simulation from all the palettes. Click on the memory designer PCB component and place it on the schematic. After placing the component, right click to bring up a menu to end the current command. Double click on the PCB component to bring up the configuration window. Select the first option, SI Pro generated cell and hit next. Use the drop down list to select the sub-circuit generated in lab 1 and hit next. Let's specify the channel ID of each signal by typing and group editing. Double clicking on a field allows you to edit. Type 0 to assign channel ID and hit enter to confirm. We will now multi-select and perform group editing. First, press Ctrl C to copy the current channel ID. Then scroll down to the end of the list with your mouse wheel. Hold shift and click on the last row of the list. Right click in place to open the context menu. Click on paste to selected and you should see all the channel ID updated. Click on finish to finalize the configuration. We will use the wiring command to auto connect all the signal lines. First. Click on the controller, then click on the PCB. The auto connection window pops up. Press the auto connect button to quickly connect all traces. Once connected, click OK to finish the connection process. Repeat the same steps for the PCB and the memory device component. Once the connection is done, press the escape key to end the wiring command. Finally, Click on the simulate button to start the simulation process. Simulation should start and a progress window should pop up. We should expect the eye diagrams to be open because the product is already in the market. Sure enough, all the eyes are open as expected. Congratulations! You now know how to perform a 3D EM simulation with SI Pro and use the result in Memory Designer. Lab 3. Use the connector in Memory Designer. Starting from where we left off, first close the data display and schematic windows. Click yes to save the modifications. Let's now bring up the ADS main window again and open Lab 3. Lab 3 schematic should look like this. Place your cursor in the middle of the setup and scroll up to zoom in. Next, we will use the connector model from the Memory Designer palette. The name of the palette is Simulation Memory Designer. 
Go ahead and click on the connector model and place it on the schematic. Right click to open the menu to end the current command or press the escape key. Double clicking on the connector opens the configuration window. In ADS 2022, the window looks slightly different, but the process is the same. Browse to the Molax 24 port connector touchstone file. You can find the S24P file close to the end of the list. Select the Molex file and click open. Once the file name is in place, click Next to continue setup. We will configure the reference designators that specify the input and output signals. The input is out to connector. And the output is J1. Once we have the input and output, click Next to continue setup. Click on Update Signal Properties from a CSV configuration file. Choose the only CSV file and click Load. The signal properties should be automatically updated. Now finish setup. Just like in Lab 2, use the wiring command in AutoConnect to link the connector to PCB and bus lines. Here is to connect PCB to the connector. Here, we make another connection from the connector to the bus lines. Finishing the connections, press the escape key to end the current command. Next, we will place the controller, configure it and connect it to the rest of the circuit. Placing the controller and ending the current command should be straightforward. Double click to configure the controller. Select DDR pre layout 1 from the drop down list. Right now, we will choose to set up without IBIS files. If you do have an IBIS file, pick the top option to configure the model. Click Next to continue configuration. Enable the in via reference designator by double clicking and click Y from the drop down list. If you click on the empty space below now, all the signals should be available. Multi select all the DQs by first select DQ0 and shift click DQ7. Right click to bring up the context menu to enable all selected. Click on next to configure each DQ line. We will group all eight DQs into one group. Multi-select, right click and create group. Give the group a name and click OK. A new group is now available. You can make other adjustments to the parameters. Here, we are changing our out to 30 ohm. Once the configuration is done, click OK to exit the window. Now, all we need to do is to auto-connect the components like before. Click on the two endpoints. Click on auto-connect and click OK. Let's end the command. And finally, we simulate. Now, we wait for the computation to be done. Almost there. After the simulation is done, the data display opens up and shows you the open eyes. Congratulations! You now know how to use the connector component in Memory Designer. You are also fluent in setting up Memory Designer simulations. Hey there, congrats on finishing the tutorial. Share the link with your colleagues, friends, and family so they can also experience the joy of using Memory Designer. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.